you want strong arms. You want arms you can be proud of when you're wearing a tank top or a sleeveless shirt. You also are annoyed by the fact that as you age, it feels like your arms are flabby. Or maybe it's something that your mom and your grandma had and you're afraid that you're going to have arms like that. Today, I'm going to share with you reasons why many women put weight on in their arms, what you can do about it. And if you stay tuned, I'm going to share with you my complete upper body workout for biceps and back. P.S. I'm going to be very honest with you about plastic surgery, too, and other options other than just exercise and diet. Listen, we all have a body part that we're self-conscious about. Most of us do. And I've done some previous episodes that you can check out. We'll put those links in our show notes about body image and why it is so hard for so many people to like let go of it and to not focus on that thing and what you can do to help improve your own body confidence. But I find that more often I'm hearing from women who are incredibly self-conscious about their arms. So today, that's what we'll address. First, I want you to know it's not all in your head, although some of this might be in your head. Women tend to, as we age, the metabolic rate slows down, we tend to put on more weight, we increase our body fat percentage, and when your body fat percentage increases, that means adipose tissue, it means like where your body is thick and is holding on to body fat, that happens everywhere, pretty much all over your body. So if you've always been a little self-conscious about your arms and, and now you're at a higher body fat percentage, you may see that your arms are getting bigger. That's number one. Number two is a lot of women have a pre-genetic disposition to put on weight in different parts of your body. You know this to be true. Some women in your family, maybe they carry weight on their hips or all the women in your family, not all, but a lot of the women in your family, they, they just get larger arms or or maybe it's like, more weight around the neck, the midsection, who knows where it is, but we all know that there's a body type in families. And that doesn't mean you're destined to have whatever shape your grandma had or your mom had or your aunt had, but it definitely means that you have a genetic predisposition for that. And the way to counter a genetic predisposition is by doing things differently than what your relatives have done. Like, Don't eat the way they do. Have a healthier lifestyle, all of those things. But the fact of the matter is, there's a part of our genetics that we just, we can't change. I am never going to be taller than 5'2". I can't change the fact that my skin is basically translucent. I have freckles and moles and I'm Irish and Scottish and that's just my genetics. Can I do things to improve it by like staying out of the sun and using good skincare? Sure. We can do certain things to improve them, but we also can't forget that our genetics are just our genetics. So we also have to stop beating ourselves up and focusing on that. I find that so many women obsess about a body part, an area of their body, because that's what they heard. They heard their mother focusing on it. They heard their grandma focusing on it. They heard their aunts talking about this particular body type. And so somebody else put that in your head So first, I want to just tell you, it's really important to just be self-aware. I am so careful not to allow people in my life to unlock insecurities that I didn't already have. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, if you have a friend, I don't know if you've ever had this happen. I have. I've had a friend who suddenly started obsessing about a particular body part. And I was like, maybe I should think about that area on me. And then I was thinking, wait, her... I'm not even going to name the body part because I I just don't want to give it any power. But I'm thinking like that area on her looks a lot better than mine. So like, should I be feeling bad about the way I look? So be very careful who you're allowing to influence what it is you're obsessed with. Undeniably, however, hormones play a huge role in where we store fat. In fact, hormones play a huge role in the times in our lives where we actually increase fat cells. I'm not talking about just increasing the size of our fat cells. I'm saying like, so most of our lives after puberty, we have the same number of fat cells. There are three times, however, in a woman's life where she can actually add, increase the number of fat cells. They are puberty, pregnancy, and menopause. And for some women, perimenopause. Basically, these are the times in our lives where hormones are freaking out of control. So that means even if you haven't gained weight, you might have gained 
fat cells. And again, if there's a genetic predisposition for you to carry that in your arms, that might be part of the reason why you're unhappy with your arms. So if we're talking about the size of your arms, what can you do about it? What do you need to consider? Well, first of all is diet, right? Because when we're eating a poor diet, when we're eating a diet that causes inflammation in our bodies, we're going to look puffier. We're going to have more significant appearance of cellulite. And yes, women, we do get cellulite on the backs of our arms. So P.S., I'm going to be very honest with you about plastic surgery too and other options other than just exercise and diet, right? Because maybe you've done all those things and you're still so unhappy with your arms. Like it's consuming your thoughts. It's affecting the way you feel. It's affecting your confidence. It's determining what you wear and what you won't wear. And it's a problem. So we're going to talk about that too. But without a doubt, if we're overeating and we're under exercising or we're not being active enough, then we put on weight. And when you put on weight, you put on weight all over. So I think it's important to say, however, that Even though I'm going to share with you my complete bicep and back routine today, and I'm going to show you how you can do it from home, I'm going to show you how you can do it at the gym. I'm going to give you lots of modifications. I'm actually going to walk you through the exercises and give you a little like a a, a cue card almost so you can take a screenshot of it and take it with you so you've got a quick reference when you go to the gym. But I do want to start by saying you can't, without surgery, spot reduce the size of your arms. In other words... You can add shape, you can put muscle in your arms, but if you're trying to shrink fat that's covering the muscle, that has to be done from head to toe. And that's by changing your nutrition. It's being painfully aware of what it is you're eating, you know, energy in versus energy out. A lot of that, right? I mean, I know we want to deny that to be true, but it's just, I mean, look at the significant weight loss that people are having right now and all these weight loss injectable drugs it's because they're consuming less energy. And some of them hopefully will be able to maintain those healthy lifestyle changes. I mean, I hope everybody who's taking one of those injectable drugs is, is learning how to modify their nutrition and their exercise. Okay, so so what can you do to just, if you weren't gonna go to the gym, if you weren't gonna add muscle, what could you do to just shrink the size of your arms? Well, there's there's no like one thing that just shrinks your arms. So you shrink your body head to toe by Carefully taking a look at your nutrition, by improving your nutrition, by all the things that you've always heard every expert, like I don't even need to repeat them because you already know them, but it's stop eating such heavily processed foods. It's really thinking about, okay, am I getting enough protein with each meal? Ideally, generally, if you make it your goal to get one gram of protein for every pound that you weigh, even if you get close to that, you're going to be like heads and above the rest. It's also recognizing that sugar plays a huge role in how your body holds on to body fat. So it's reducing your sugar. It's increasing the amount of unprocessed or as minimally processed foods as possible. I mean, listen, I eat processed foods, but I try to eat as healthy and as minimally processed as possible. I try to eat whole grains and whole foods and whole fruits and and meats and, and lean proteins and lots of dark green leafy vegetables, which wasn't easy, by the way. Believe it or not, when we were traveling through Europe, I guess that's a really American thing. Like getting a big green salad, I found out is, I mean, you can get fresh vegetables everywhere in Europe and everything feels and tastes so delicious and so fresh, but it was really hard to get just a big green salad. I was so craving like a big green salad. And everyone was like, that's such an American thing. Like when Europeans go to America, they're like, what are these people doing just ordering a big green salad? But it's great for you. And you want your diet to focus on things that help you to build muscle, help you to maintain a healthy hunger level, right? So if you're starving, if you are constantly feeling this crash, you're probably consuming maybe too many calories, or maybe just way too high of a intake of carbohydrates or sugar. Now, I'm not one who regularly tracks my macros anymore. I do from time to time. Like when I can feel like something's off and I'm I'm putting on body fat and I don't know what's going on, I will definitely track my macros. I do that in phases. I still phase my diet and I phase my diet so that I don't slip into bad habits unknowingly. But when I do notice that, okay, I feel like my body fat's creeping up, then I'm going to track my macros because they probably haven't paid attention to those little tiny things that we add to our diet, whatever it is. They're like, I, I didn't even think about the fact that that added 50 calories and then 100 calories and then 
300 at the end of the day. And, and you know, this explains why I'm creeping up on the scale or in terms of my body fat level. So you want to look at your diet. And obviously, energy in versus energy out means move more. Just move more. I'm not saying you need to do high impact cardio at the gym. I'm no longer a fan of that. I am a big fan of walking, walking, walking. Your girl walks everywhere. I, I love it. It's so much easier on my joints. It's so much easier on my body. I don't feel like sore and tired and achy. I did a whole episode just on how I've shifted the way that I exercise that's allowed me to spend a lot less time in the gym and get better results and have more body confidence, fewer injuries. And I will link to that in our show notes. If you're watching here on YouTube, it'll be linked up here. But ultimately, to reduce the size of your arms, if that's what we're talking about, if we're talking about size, then it means you've just got to reduce your overall body fat, bottom line. And we do that in all the same ways that you already know you need to put into practice, all the the habits, the things that need to become part of your lifestyle. I, I don't want this to be a short-term thing that you're trying to have amazing arms for your you know, daughter's wedding or, I don't know, prom or like whatever is coming up for you. Like I've got a lot of high school girls watching this video. I don't know what I'm talking about, but you know what I'm saying? Like at any age, you might hate your arms and you shouldn't because your arms allow you to hug people. Your arms allow you to hold a baby. Your arms allow you to reach them out to somebody who's in pain. Your arms are beautiful. Like how could you hate such a gift? So first, I just want to tell you to shift your perspective. Don't focus on it. Think about what an amazing gift your arms are like, and I don't mean to be like weird or woo woo about it, but like literally to be able to hug somebody who's in need, I can't imagine. So be gentle on yourself and then remember if it's size, you got to just reduce your size overall, right? And, and do so in a healthy way, I beg of you. If however, it's like, well, I want my arms to have more shape. Like that was a goal of mine. Like two, three years ago, I said, I have been working on my deltoids for years and they just won't get bigger. I wanted bigger deltoids. I wanted more pronounced shoulders. I wanted like super sculpted shoulders, like Jillian Michaels shoulders. So what did I do? I hired a personal trainer. I was already lifting and doing, you know, all the shoulder exercises all the time, but I'm like, I need somebody else's perspective. Whatever it is I'm doing, I, I've hit a plateau, I'm stuck. So I need somebody to coach me. I need someone to give me something a little different. And I hired Mia Finnegan. Shout out to Mia. I, I've talked about her a ton on the show. She's one of the kindest, nicest, most authentic, beautiful humans I've ever met in my life. I love you, Mia, if you're listening. And you guys, she has an online sculpting program that you can check out. I highly recommend her. She does virtual personal training as well. And anyways, so I started working with her and I like just the tiny little tweaks. Like she didn't give me any exercises I've never done before, except one. But all the exercises that I did, like just having her fine tune the way that I was doing those exercises made a huge difference in my deltoid development, in my arm development. And what it is you want to change about your arms, you want to change the shape of them, then it's about strength training. Now, if it's your legs, then you want to focus on your legs. But for me, I was very focused on my shoulders. I still am today. So I train my legs three days a week and I train my shoulders two to three days per week. Not necessarily mean that the whole workout is dedicated to my shoulders, but at least on three different days, I'm doing something for shoulder development. And what I'm going to share with you today is for bicep development. So if you want strong biceps, if you want a nice lean back, I've got a great workout that you'll see at the end of this episode if you happen to be watching on YouTube. If you're listening to this on whatever podcast app that you're listening to, finish, but then take a moment, head over to YouTube, do yourself a favor and subscribe. You will also see that in a previous YouTube, I posted my complete weekly workout routine, what I'm doing right now. And of course, I phase that too. I, and when I change it, I will update you. So make sure, if you haven't already, 
to double check and make sure you're subscribed because when I update that routine, you'll see it first. But when I recorded that weekly workout, I forgot to post my back and bicep routine. So you're in luck. I'm going to share that with you today. But in terms of getting stronger arms, how long can you expect to do a routine before you start to see muscle development? Again, I wish I could give you a very specific answer, but everyone's different. You know those people. They can like look at a dumbbell and they their arms are more defined. And then there are those of us who we just don't necessarily put on muscle as quickly. And so it might take as many as three, four, six, eight, 12 weeks. I will say this, when you're changing your nutrition, when you really start to refine your nutrition, which might require you tracking your macros and may require you keeping a food diary using your push journal, you're going to see your results much faster, right? Because you can have really strong sculpted shoulders, but if you've got a layer of fat over your biceps, over the back, over your shoulders, it, you're just not going to see the muscles quickly. So I highly recommend that if, if you want to see faster results, then dial in your nutrition. And in case you didn't know, I do have a, a fitness subscription on Instagram. So if you go to Instagram and you click on subscription, which is like right under my profile, we'll show you what that looks like right here. When you click on that, you can subscribe. It's I think $4.99 a month and you'll see the past workouts that I've done. I share with you proper form, how many reps, sets, how to do the workouts from home, how to do the workouts at the gym, different modifications, and it's all strength training. I think there's like maybe two cardio workouts in there, but most of them are strength training because it's what I do and it's what I believe in and it's what I've seen transform my body and change the bodies of so many women who were trying to get their body back and didn't wanna continually beat their bodies up with cardio. Now listen, if you are a cardio junkie and you love running, keep it up. I love it for you. But I would highly encourage anyone who's watching this to incorporate more strength training. Now, lastly, as promised, before I get to the workout, I want to talk to you about cosmetic surgery. Now, I've, I've never done anything to my arms, but I will say I know people and I have friends and there are people who I watch in social media who have been very open and transparent. The way they felt about their arms was destroying their confidence. And for some of these women, it was because they had a massive amount of weight loss and they felt like, you know, they had this extra flap of skin and they wanted to remove it. Or for some of these women, it was like they felt like they were lean everywhere, but they just put on cellulite and body fat on their arms. And no matter how much time they spent in the gym, that was just their trouble area. And here's the part that like, I get it. They felt like if I try to lose more and more body fat, I'm going to lose body fat everywhere, including in my face. And really the only place that was bothering them was in their arms. And so some of these women considered doing skin tightening. There's a procedure called, and listen, I'm not the expert on this. I can do a whole episode. We can do a deep dive on this if you want. I'm all for you doing what you want because it's your body. So don't let anyone judge you. Don't feel like you're cheating because you know you you wanna do that. Like screw what anybody else thinks. Like it is your body. And if you feel amazing about it, you're gonna be a more amazing human. Like I'm not telling you to like, go under the knife because you've got to fit a perfect stereotype or to even to do it for somebody else. But if it's going to make you feel friggin' amazing, then friggin' do it. Like who cares what anybody else thinks? But promise me that you will listen to all of the episodes that I've done on how to find a qualified plastic surgeon or surgeon in general. I don't, and I don't care what it is you're considering doing. Do not go off of recommendations or reviews. There's so much more research that you need to do. However, like Emily from Real Housewives of Orange County, I recently saw an interview with her where she talked about like people were saying like, you've completely transformed your body. What is going on? And she shared, well, I went on Ozempic for a month and it kickstarted my weight loss. And then I felt lousy on it. So I went off it. I think it was Ozempic. It was one of those semaglutides. And she said, and then I just decided I want to get liposuction on my arms. I've always hated my arms. And she said that doing liposuction on her arms like changed the game for her. Like then she was like, then I really started to dial in my nutrition. I really started to kick up my workouts. It was like the kickstart that I needed. So listen, I'm not here to judge. I'm here to encourage you to do what's right for you. And I think it's horrible when women beat themselves up because they're they're eating all the same things that 
so-and-so is eating and they're doing the same workouts. In fact, they're eating less than so-and-so and they're doing the same workouts and they, they just, no matter how much they try, there's this one stubborn area where they just can't get rid of the fat. And I'm, I'm just here to tell you, like, boo, you do you. I just want you to be super healthy and happy. And again, I'm not encouraging you to take any drastic measures, but I am encouraging you to do your research, to be kind to yourself. And if it makes you happy and you can afford to do it, friggin' do it. Go for it. But in the meantime, you got to have some muscle. Even if you're doing liposuction, even if you're doing skin tightening, like it makes a huge difference if you have muscle to support what's on top of it, right? Like, so your skin just hangs there unless you've got the shape underneath it when that comes from muscle. All right, we're about to get to the workout. Before we do, please do me a favor, double check and make sure you've turned on your notifications because when you turn your notifications, that's how you'll see these videos. They're gonna show up in your feed. Otherwise, they won't show up in your feed. So, well, maybe they will, but this is how we can be certain that they show up on your feed. And drop me a comment and let me know what podcast topic you'd like for me to cover next. All right, let's get to it. This is a standing alternating bicep curl. And the reason why I alternate is because I'm trying to go a little bit heavier. So this is an exercise I will use heavier dumbbells. If you don't have dumbbells that challenge your current level of strength, then you could just do both arms at the same time. The key here is good form. So you might do fewer reps, making sure your elbows are stationary, like tight to your body. Again, you want to stop curling when the muscle no longer feels tension, right? So as you, if you come all the way up to your shoulder, you're not going to feel any tension from gravity. So you want to keep the muscle under tension the entire time, which means you, you stop just before you get to your shoulder. And of course, remember to focus on good posture, thinking about the muscle group that you're working. You could do this as a standard bicep curl or a hammer curl. For this one, I've anchored the band around something that's not going to move. Um, you could also anchor this around your feet. You want to hold the band with your palms facing each other. Elbows are bent. Again, initiate the movement from your scapula, the muscles of your back. Draw your elbows in tight to your rib cage. Make sure your core is engaged. Keep your back upright and in a neutral position. And as you pull the band towards you, the goal again is to try to get your elbows back as far as you can, squeezing your shoulder blades together as your elbows pass your torso. And always, always, always when you're pulling the bands towards your face, please like wear protective goggles. I'm just joking, but for sure you need to check the band and make sure that there's no potential tears or rips or wear that could cause the band to snap. Doing bicep curls on an incline bench or just like positioning yourself in an incline is an incredible way to get a more effective pump from whatever weights you're using for your biceps. In fact, most people will find they have to go a little bit lighter because of the angle. The angle, this incline, basically makes gravity more effective. Like we're creating an angle that puts more tension on the muscle. So that's why you might have to lift a little bit lighter. As always, keep your elbows tight to your body and stationary. Palms are facing forward. Stop before you go completely vertical. As soon as we go vertical, there's no more gravity. So there's no more tension. Whenever we're using weights, I love it when you go a little bit slower on the eccentric contraction, meaning as I lower the weight, I tend to go slower on that part of the rep. Okay, position yourself so that you can grab the band at an angle. Now you're gonna do this with one hand because you're gonna get the best results with this particular angle and how I've anchored the band. So you wanna grip the band so your palm is facing away from you. And you can do this standing or kneeling. You know, if you need to create more tension, that's why I'm kneeling. Uh, but then start with your arm fully extended. And as you initiate the movement, it should begin in your scapula, the muscles of your back. Draw your elbow back and down, kind of aiming towards the middle of your back. You want to squeeze the lat muscles and try to imagine that you're, you're drawing those muscles into your back pockets. The goal is to bring your elbow to at least a 90 degree angle, if not more. Keep your shoulders low. Try not to involve the trapezius or the neck muscles and simply repeat. This is one of my absolute favorite exercises for the biceps. As you can see, I have the band positioned behind me. It's anchored. And you, you could anchor it under your foot and just kind of lean forward. But I prefer to, to make sure it's around something that's not going to move. It's not going to slip off and snap me. And I just get such a good bicep pump doing this exercise with the band positioned and creating this 45-degree angle. So you're going to always hold the band so that your palms are facing 
forward, like as you curl them up, they're going to face you. You want to keep your elbows locked at your side. Don't move your elbows. Really keep those stationary. And then remember to squeeze all the way up at the top. Because you're using a band, you're going to get resistance the entire movement until you become perpendicular. So you want to stop the movement just before you reach your shoulders. Now we have the bent over single arm row. You can go so much heavier with this exercise than what you realize, like pick up a big heavy weight. If you don't have heavy weights, put two of them together. Of course, you could do this with bands too. You would just anchor it underneath your foot and make sure that the band gave you enough resistance to create that, you know, ultimate fatigue that you're looking for. This movement always starts with the scapula. So you fully extend the arm. You keep the elbow very tight to your torso as you draw the elbow up. But instead of thinking about lifting or pulling the elbow up, think about the scapula starting the movement. So all the muscles of your lats, your rhomboids, everything that's like around your shoulder blade, those are the muscles that are squeezing or pulling your arm up. And then you kind of finish with the elbow coming in as high and as tight to the midline of your body as possible to get that ultimate contraction. Hey, you're in luck. Uh, that was the first back and bicep workout, but I'm going to give you you another variation. This one you're going to see some of the same exercises, but how you can do them at the gym. Here you go. Don't worry, you can do this one at home with bands and as long as you have one of those anchors that attaches to a door. While you're doing this on the machine, however, you'll sit by placing your feet on the platform. Knees are just slightly bent. You reach forward, you grab the, the handles, and you pull the handles back towards your torso while keeping your back upright and straight. Now your hands should be moving in a straight line and your elbows should be tight to your body or your torso. I want you to picture me standing behind you and what I'm looking for is your scapula movement. I wanna see your shoulder blades moving towards your spine first before your arms even start to bend. Once you've pulled your hands all the way to your rib cage, then I want you to think about squeezing the scapula, like squeezing your back muscles before slowly releasing. For this bent over reverse fly, I'm going a little heavier and that's why you see me alternating. You could do both arms together at the same time if you'd like. Notice that I'm bent over it to about a 45 degree angle, abs in tight, core supported, and I'm lifting with my palms facing the back of the room and my pinky is in the lead. So it's almost like your palm is in the same position it would be in if you were pouring out a jug of water. And as you raise the dumbbell to the side in the horizontal plane, imagine your shoulder blades trying to squeeze them together. All right, when you squeeze the shoulder blades together, that's what's going to activate that posterior deltoid. It's a smaller muscle. It's a smaller, of the smallest of the three deltoids, but it's one that really helps give your arm that definition. You're also going to be activating your rhomboids, the muscles that kind of give you that strong, tall, upright posture. Don't think about this movement starting with your arm. Think of it starting with your shoulder blade, like picture the scapula moving toward the spine. The barbell bicep curl, and don't worry if you don't have a barbell, you can also do this with dumbbells. Stand with your feet shoulder width apart, secure your elbows right in front of your hips, and imagine that you've got an underhand grip on a barbell, even if you're using dumbbells. Now, the only thing that should be moving is your forearms, right? So your elbows are almost locked in or imagine them bolted to the front of your hip bones and you're curling all the way up till you feel that tight, tight contraction. Don't go all the way to your shoulders, although I think I am here in this particular video, but if you can stop just short of the shoulders, it's going to give you the maximum amount of contraction, and that's the goal. And you want to lower down very slowly, always extending your arms fully, but remembering that you want to make sure you use control. Don't let gravity do all the work. I don't know why it is actually harder to do this with a, a barbell, but it is, I'm telling you. So whenever I'm using my dumbbells, I really just try to imagine that there is a pole or a bar between them, and for some reason, it really does make a difference. For this wide cable pull down, you can also use bands. I'll show you how in just a second. Now I'm kneeling in this position so that I've got a lot of range of motion. You wanna be able to fully extend your arms when you're starting this exercise. Palms are out facing away from you. Arms are wide, wider than shoulder width apart. Always initiate the movement in the shoulder blades first, then the arms kind of follow. When you bring your elbows in as tight to your body as you possibly can, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Hold for just a moment before you slowly release. And remember when you release, think about your muscles controlling the cable or the bands versus gravity just dragging them away from you. In this clip, I'm showing you how to do this with a band. And I do have to say it is more effective to do this particular exercise 
with the cable machine versus the band. But when you need to make do, you need to make do. Just get in the habit of always triple checking your bands to make sure that there's no tear or wear that could cause your band to snap because they're very dangerous when they do. Be careful. So you're gonna to need to find a way to recline yourself back slightly. Once you do that, let your arms hang down naturally, holding the dumbbells, palms facing up or forward. Then when you curl the weights up, remember to keep your elbow stationary, like it's almost pinned next to you. Don't let it slide forward or slide back. As the dumbbells reach your shoulder level, then you wanna hold it briefly, right at the peak of the contraction, then slowly lower the dumbbells back down. In this position, the weights are gonna feel much heavier than they normally do, so don't be surprised if you do have to go a little bit lighter. Also, don't just drop the weights. Be very intentional about lowering them. The key here is form, it's not speed. A good rule of thumb is to exhale as you curl the weight up and inhale as you lower it down. Remember, you don't want to hold it at the top for very long and at least not perpendicular because when you're perpendicular, there's no gravitational pull. So it's almost like a break. So I, I try to stop just before I get to my shoulders and squeeze right where the weight feels the heaviest. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Again, just a reminder that if you want more detailed instructions on how to lift what days you should split upper body, lower body, what muscle groups, how many reps, how many sets, how to perform them with exceptional form, I would encourage you to check out my Instagram subscription. In the meantime, I've got another episode I'd love for you to listen to some of the biggest mistakes that women make over 40 when it comes to their health and fitness. Thanks for being here. I love you. I mean it. And I'll talk to you soon.